So if you joined us in our last video, you may remember that we have this uh, rocket here in orbit um, with a giant docking port on it. And the reason for that is because in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to launch and dock with this rocket. Um, we're going to quickly rename this as dock target. We can call it whatever we want. And we're going to rename this one. And this one here, we're just going to quickly rename it to uh, capsule. So we're going to dock with this rocket. So we're going to head in and we're going to build a new rocket. And we're going to quickly pick our design. Again, we can pick a couple different options for this. But the most important thing that we need to make sure that we do include in this rocket is we go to other is a docking port. Now, it could be the small docking port, large docking port. These all will all sizes will dock with each other as long as they are centered like that. Um, they'll work perfectly fine. So for our case, we're going to just use a small one um, because we don't really need it to be that big. We're going to put one on each side because the next mission I'm going to do is show you how to then add a lander and go to the moon. We're going to add some fuel into this. Now, I'm going to go with the 20 ton tank because we're going to need a bit of fuel for maneuvering. And we're going to slap on some RCS thrusters. Now, this is very important. Um, if you plan on docking, you can dock without RCS thrusters. I just don't recommend not using them. Um, and I put four on here because we do want to be able to rotate, angle, etc. And four thrusters will allow us to do so. Again, we'll slap a relatively modest engine on there, the Kalarvi engine. Because once we're in space, we can extend the longer uh, flight time. And then we're going to set this up as a second stage. And looking at our tonnage, 26 tons, we're going to add uh, 26 tons of fuel. So double that. Add that one, that one. So we're going to add three stages of fuel. And then we're going to add an engine. Now, in this case, our thrust to weight ratio is still okay. Um, anything lower than sort of 1.3, you're going to use a lot of fuel just trying to get up to velocity. But for this, we should be okay. And we're going to launch the rocket. is gone we're going to eject it and we're going to start the other engine now the efficiency on this engine is about 175 or so the efficiency on these thrusters is about 120 so we want to use the primary engine as much as possible and minimize our RCS engines um, for docking managed to reach orbit a little bit crookedly though uh, because our target is right here and we're going to navigate to it now i have a bunch of mods etc that allow me to have these cool approach vectors and everything you don't actually need that you can follow along with the transfer windows here uh, and you just want to collect a transfer window point um, in these small orbits the transfer windows will end up bouncing around a lot. So the best way I suggest doing it is basically doing a time warp. Um, generally 25 is pretty good and waiting until the rocket actually hits one of the uh, transfer points and it'll give you a plus or minus uh, percentage and you can then go and increase your velocity. So there we go. We have a trans we hit a transfer point. Um, it says we need 136. This is 
not a great orbit, but for the purpose of this uh, experiment, we're just going to go with it. Ideally, you want to try to get the orbits closer as possible, but the closer they are, the longer you have to actually do an orbit. So, generally, I would recommend that you want at least 5 to 10 kilometers between your orbits. Um, that significantly reduces the amount of time. Now, we went a little over, so I'm going to turn on the RCS system, and I'm just going to back it up ever so slightly. Because I have this mod, which is the closest approach line from ASOD, um, I can see how close they're getting, and I can actually just tweak it to try to get the, the closest number, which is about 605 meters, because they don't actually cross. But that's okay. Because what we're going to do next is time warp to about right here. And the reason we're doing this is because this will get us to there, and now we can see, using the RCS system, just slightly, move it so that the rockets are closer. Now, obviously, if you don't have this mod, all you're trying to do is make it so that the lines cross. Um, in my case, I want lines across, and I want 50 meters because I'd like them not to actually hit each other. And then we're going to turn the RCS system off, and we're going to rotate the rocket like so, and we're going to go to our target, we're going to switch to it, because it's pointing in the wrong direction, we're going to have it point like this. And the reason for this is because we're going to be using the engine to slow down and match orbits once we're close enough, and then we'll use the RCS system to maneuver us into position, um, close to the rocket. So we have this guy here, and obviously we'll get to the side, but we don't want to be trying to dock with the back end of the ship. We're going to move our rocket to about right here, time warp. At this point, the rockets should be close enough that we should see them if we zoom out. Yeah, there they are. And you can see here that we're traveling way too fast, like it's going to go right by us. So we're actually going to gauge our engine and slow down. See our target is here. As we continue to slow down, it'll start to move closer. And if we look at the map, you can see our orbits are pretty darn close. I've actually kind of slowed down a little too much, but that's okay. Um, this is one of the issues where if you're really close to the Earth atmosphere, you actually slow down and then you're actually going slower and then to get there. So I'm now going to rotate the rocket prograde, pointing in the direction we want to go, but I'm going to wait a while for us to reach to the target until I kind of reasonably zoom in that I can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. And then we're going to engage the rocket again until it comes to a complete stop. Okay, we're back into low Earth orbit, which is good. And now we just have to be very patient and wait for us to line up. Or we could do time acceleration because, you know, this is a video tutorial. And all we're doing is waiting for it to get close. Like so. And there we go. Now that we're close enough, we can actually use the RCS system we have to <clears throat> slow the rocket finally and get into position. Again, RCS will drain your fuel very quickly, so you want to use it as sparingly as possible. Try to line it up so that you're going to make the pass, realizing that uh, when you get closer, the docking ports will actually start to gravitate towards each other unless you turn that off, um, which is an option if you want to make this even harder or easier, depending on how you are. And there we go. We've docked with our spacecraft. Now, we have 50% fuel in this compartment here, and we have 16% fuel in this compartment here. So next stage we want to do is we want to go to the moon. However, if we go to the moon, we can do a flyby, but we clearly need a lander. So 
we're going to go in the next video and build a lander, dock it, and then launch this to the moon.